Hi, it's Dr. Daly. I wanted to take a minute and record a brief PowerPoint presentation to highlight the concepts around the new advisory regarding cardiac arrest transport orders. On March 27th, we issued an advisory specific to cardiac arrest transport, and this has generated a lot of really good questions from our providers, both in terms of whether or not this was the best thing we could do for patients, um, as well as whether or not this was the safest thing we could do for our providers, and also what we would do about leaving patients behind and how we would work with families. The purpose of this advisory and this clarification of procedure is to make sure that we're taking optimal care of our patients and assure the safety of our providers. There has never been a demonstrated benefit to transporting a patient in cardiac arrest with CPR in progress. In fact, in places where there's been a change in care to very aggressive on-scene resuscitation and non-transport of patients without return of spontaneous circulation, the resuscitation rate has increased across that community. The clarified procedure is that no adult medical cardiac arrest is to be moved to a hospital with manual or mechanical compressions in progress unless there has been a direct order from a medical control physician ordering that or there's been a return of spontaneous circulation with the caveat that if there is an imminent physical danger to the EMS providers on the scene, those providers may certainly have the latitude to initiate CPR and get off the scene. If that occurs, as soon as they are safely able to do so, they should contact a medical control physician to discuss ongoing resuscitation. A couple of people have asked why a regional procedure? And the answer is that a regional procedure takes over where a protocol leaves off. The protocols themselves very strongly discourage CPR and moving ambulances. This takes it to the next level so we can make sure we're keeping our providers as safe as possible. The literature is clear. Movement of a cardiac arrest without return of spontaneous circulation does not increase the chance of patient survival. And our goal is to save the patients that can be saved. Transportation of cardiac arrests with CPR in progress reduces the chance of intact survival because we are spending more time moving the patient, more energy with that moving process than on doing good quality CPR. And movement of a cardiac arrest with CPR in progress increases the chance of provider injury. We need to make sure we're keeping our providers as safe as possible. So why work a cardiac arrest on the scene? Well, the answer is really pretty simple. If we focus our cardiac arrest resuscitation efforts on the resuscitation itself, rather than a plan for evacuation from the scene, we are more likely to concentrate our efforts on quality compressions, rotating compressors to keep good quality compressions going as continually as possible, adequate ventilations, and access and initial medications. These are the things that have been demonstrated to change outcomes. There is a set of, uh, of papers that have been written over time on ALS termination rules, and these are very specific to cases where the cardiac arrest was not witnessed by EMS, there's never been defibrillation, there was never return of spontaneous circulation, the arrest wasn't witnessed by anybody, and there was no bystander CPR. In these cases, we will never get these patients back. And it's important to recognize that we're using the literature as much as possible to make good quality determinations on what is best for our patients and what's best for our providers. There have been a number of really good questions raised about this procedure. The first one is what about pediatric cardiac arrest? Well, this procedure itself covers adult medical cardiac arrests. And the reason we did that was specifically because pediatric cardiac arrests are such difficult situations. We want you to call medical direction early in the pediatric cardiac arrest case 
to discuss management, get some assistance with direction of the case, and to make sure that we are working as well as possible on the scene to save that child. Care in place, rather than moving the patient immediately, will improve the chance of a good outcome. This has been well demonstrated in multiple studies. So if you have the misfortune of taking care of a pediatric cardiac arrest patient, please work that patient as aggressively as possible, right in place, right where they are, so that if there's a chance of getting that child to survive, we save them. Now, what about trauma arrests? Well, trauma arrests, we already have a pretty aggressive protocol of non-transport. That's why we didn't add it in to this procedure as well. Because if it's blunt trauma and there's a trauma arrest, we should be calling medical control early and securing that cardiac arrest then. We should never be moving blunt trauma, trauma arrests. And in penetrating trauma, really the only chance of survival is if that patient is only a few minutes from the trauma center. That's the only chance of survival. So call medical control early to discuss trauma arrests if you think that's a patient that may need to be transported because the answer is almost always going to be no. Now, what about transporting cardiac arrest with CPR in progress? The answer is never, don't do that, it's dangerous. What about when to secure a cardiac arrest? Well, if there isn't any return of spontaneous circulation, that's a cardiac arrest that we're gonna be securing on the scene because we're not gonna transport that patient unless there really are exigent circumstances that require it. What about legal ramifications of not transporting cardiac arrests? It's important to recognize you can always get sued. Sometimes it's because you did something, sometimes because you didn't do something, but the basic answer for how to protect yourself from legal liability is by doing good care. Good care in a cardiac arrest patient is good quality resuscitation right on scene, not putting that patient into the back of an ambulance and going to the hospital with CPR in progress. The standard of care for cardiac arrest is good aggressive resuscitation on the scene. If you contacted a physician the physician said the cardiac arrest should be terminated, then the standard of care was met. Our goals? Well, they're really pretty simple. We want people who suffer cardiac arrest who are salvageable, we want to save them. And the patients who suffer cardiac arrest who can't be saved will safely be left in place. EMS providers will be doing a lot of work learning how to use the skills that they have of interacting with the public in order to secure cardiac arrests effectively in the field. This is about compassion, this is about empathy, and this is about very clear messaging to the people on the scene. We want our EMS agencies to support our providers and care teams as we move to this change in procedure, because really, this is going to be the best thing for our providers, for our system, and actually for our patients. Our next steps, well, we know that it's difficult to do death notifications. And we're gonna have providers from both Albany Med and the University of Rochester, as well as some others working to help develop structured approaches to notification of death for people that haven't done this before. We're gonna share as much material as we can find from existing training programs to assist in this as well. Death notification is really about empathy, compassion, and clear messaging using words like dead and died to make sure that there is no confusion in the survivors and to make sure that they understand that the things we did for their loved one were the same things that would have happened in the hospital. So that's a brief overview of why we shouldn't transport cardiac arrests with CPR in progress. That's a brief overview to remind you that the best care we can give to somebody is right there in place on the scene. So while we go through this COVID crisis, remember to wash your hands, maintain social distancing, hang in there because we're going to get through this, and most of all, stay safe. <music>